Hi guys, I'm Michelle Lee, and I'll be your visual artist for this lesson. March is Women's History Month, and today we're going to uh, talk about the famous contemporary artist, Sandra Silsbury. And we're going to create a portrait inspired by her artwork. The materials we're going to need today, sheet of paper, pencil and eraser, and a little cup of crayons. Sandra Silsberwig was born and raised in Toronto, Canada in the 1960s. Let's take a look at the map of Canada. See, towards the right, we have the United States and Canada, and towards the left shows the map of Canada, or should I say the locations of Canada. If you see where Toronto is, Toronto takes that dip into the United States towards the right of our map. Sandra Silsberwig is a contemporary painter of visionary outsider art. Uh, outsider art means she's uh, self-taught, usually art makers outside the mainstream art world. Um, she uses uh, unconventional ideas or elaborate fantasy worlds um, in her artwork. Um, remember, contemporary means that she's still alive today. Um, her work is abstract, which means that it's not representing reality exactly, because um, she uses uh, shapes, forms, colors, and textures uh, and patterns in her artwork. She's been painting all her life. She was university educated in art, but self-taught in painting. We're honoring uh, Women's History Month because women were the unsung heroes, and sometimes their contributions went unnoticed. They were m as much a vital part of our history as the men whose names we know so well. <clears throat> Sandra Silsberwig is um, a contemporary Canadian artist, um, and she had a rare condition known as synesthesia. People diagnosed with this condition can see, hear, and taste color. Synesthesia is a, a crossing of the senses. This means that she may hear color or see music. Imagine that. Now, children growing up with this condition may not be aware that others do not see or experience the world as they do. She used her talents to create tribal-like, colorful, abstract portraits. Her influences come from many sources like Picasso's art. Um, it influenced her work most of all. She called herself the goddess of color. I have an inspiring uh, lesson for students about individuals overcoming personal struggles. She learned to make her condition work as a positive for her. No one should be defined by their struggles. Perseverance and learning to make your unique differences an asset. Does anyone here in the class have a condition or fear of letting anyone know about it? Just think, some people think that they may be called freaks or something else. Remember, we are all unique and we should not tease anyone about anything. No two people are exactly alike, even twins. It's okay to be different, if not, we would be pretty boring. As we look at Sandra Sealsburg or Wiggs uh, artwork, we can definitely see she is not boring. So 
we have our sheet of paper. First thing we do, of course, is we have our pencil and we're going to go ahead and write our name with our pencil. I'm going to be using my um, marker so that you can see what I'm drawing. So this is what we're going to be doing. We're going to be doing our Sandra Silverwig abstract portrait. Now, does anybody know what um, is um, a portrait? Well, it's a picture. It's a picture of someone. Uh, if you're doing it of yourself, it's a self-portrait. If you're doing it of someone else, um, then it's a portrait, just a portrait. And um, our artist for, for this month is Sandra Silsberwig. And um, we're going to do a Silsberwig, excuse me, a Silsberwig portrait. Now, we have our paper. Um, here's the top half. Here's the bottom half. Here's the right side. Here's the left side. And this is the very middle of my paper. I'm going to go up a little bit and to the left just a hair. I'm going to go ahead and put a dot. A very small little dot. And actually, I'm going to do a straight line going straight up. Anybody know what kind of line that's called? Besides straight line, the direction of the line, it's called vertical. Okay, a vertical line. And I'm going to go ahead and go about halfway on my paper. Go about halfway and I'm going to go ahead and do a horizontal line. A horizontal line. Then I'm going to do it again. I'm going to come up a little bit and then I'm going to go all the way up. This is a, what kind of line? A vertical line. And when I'm, going, when I'm going side to side, that is a horizontal line, like the horizon from side to side. Now, what's that look like? It could be your nose. Right. So it could be someone's nose. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to do a couple of more horizontal lines. Let's see, I have one going this way. I'm going to do one this way. Here's my horizontal line. And I'm going to do another one on this side. There we go. Now, I'm going to go ahead and do a curve and a curve. Remember, these pictures are abstract. They don't really represent anything. Uh, they, you know, they're not real looking. They're not realistic. But um, she uses shapes and forms and um, texture, color. So here I'm thinking about doing a curve line and I'll meet the other end. And another curve line at the bottom. See, it kind of looks like an almond shape or almost like an ellipse. Remember an ellipse? Okay, so here's my little almond shape. Ooh, this one's really big. That's quite alright. They don't have to be the same size. All right. In fact, uh, I'm going to go ahead and put my eye in there. If you want to put yours on the top, it's very good. You could. Or the bottom. I'm going to go ahead and let's see. This will be my pupil. I could left. I should have left a little opening so I could color the inside a different color. So here's going to be one eye. And here's another eye. That one I left a little larger. All right. So here's my eyes. From my nose, I'm going to come down a little bit, about two fingers width, and I'm going to come down. Oh, let's see. Okay, I'm going to stop there. The next thing is, you'll know what the letter V looks like. There's our, our letter V, right? Well, I'm going to open up my V a little bit more. Y'all know what an arrow looks like? Well, this is going to be an arrow, like an arrow. See? Looks like an arrow going downward, right? All right, and underneath my arrow, I'm going to go ahead and do another horizontal line. If you want a small, large, whatever, that, that will work. And here's my little curve. Here's my little curve. So what do you think this is? It's my top lip and my bottom lip. If you want to do it smaller inside, you can. I'm going to go ahead and do this one real, another big one. All right, let's see. We have our 
nose, our mouth, our eyes. Oh, coming down, what do we find? What do we find when we're coming down? From our mouth we come down, we find our chin. Let's see, I'm gonna go ahead and draw a line coming down from the chin, and then from there, I'm gonna go ahead and come off the side. Going back up. So, that will work. Okay, um, see my eyes coming down from my eyes underneath. I'm gonna go ahead about, about underneath. What do you think that is? That's the neck. Now you can draw whatever kind of line you want. I'm gonna go ahead and do one that kind of curves a little bit up and down. Let's see, it's called a wavy line. There we go. Oh, let me put some, maybe some eyebrows on this side. Maybe I'll do two, because it's really not eyebrows. I'm gonna put patterns in them. Uh, let's see, I'm using a lot of uh, straight lines and curved lines. Uh, like I said, I use curve one way, curve the other way, curve one way. I'm gonna go ahead and do a curvy line. This is actually called a wave. Right? There's my wavy line. Now, um, I'm going to go back, since I'm using some kind of curves, I'm going to go back to straight lines. Let's see, I'm going to go ahead and do some zigzag lines. Zigzag goes one way, changes direction, goes another way, goes another way, changes direction, changes direction, changes direction changes direction. See how it keeps changing direction. And just to do it, I'm going to go off. There we go. Cool. Um, I'll go back to straight lines since I did my, this might be a, an extension of the eyelash, eyelashes. It could. Actually, I'm just playing around. I'm doing a Sandra Silsbury portrait. Okay, I uh, did some straight lines. I'm going to go ahead and do a curve. This is going to be like my little cheek, my little rosy cheeks. In fact, I'm going to be different and do two. It's cool to be different. And um, let's see, you can put a kind of shapes if you like. I did a circle on this side. You could do squares, hearts, triangles, diamonds. I'm going to do a triangle. And um, I'm going to do three triangles that's what i'm gonna do i'm gonna keep going getting bigger and bigger and bigger see this one i'm gonna just do a little pattern that's just my different pattern i wonder how yours is coming out you know if y'all can ever send them to facebook well i'd love to see your class's pictures all right so we have our sandra silver we um artwork here. Oh, let's do put some, uh, this will be like a shirt, and let's go ahead and put some lines coming down the shirt. Again, when it goes up and down, it's called a what kind of line? Vertical line. Alright, ooh, I'm gonna do a line from one corner to another corner, kind of slanted, that's called a diagonal line. Ooh, what letter of the alphabet did I just make? Looks like the X. I'm gonna skip one. Let's see, I'm gonna do some more zigzags. I love to do zigzag. And in fact, I'm gonna do it like a little triangle inside because we can do shapes and shapes. All right, so the next thing, I'm, I'm gonna think of circles, circles and circles and circles I'll just fill it full little circles and uh, I'm gonna do a line I'm gonna do from side to side what's that called uh, lines that go side to side those are called horizontal lines lines that go up and down those are called vertical lines. And let's see, I'm going to do a circle. 
and a small circle, a small circle, and we do a big circle. It looks like donuts. And you can you can fill up how many you want. I'm gonna just do a couple here. If you like something in one direction and you want to put it in another direction, go ahead, have fun. Oh, let's see. I like circles. Uh, let me do ovals instead, though. I'll put some ovals up here just to be different. You can draw some in after a while if you'd like to color some in. Okay. I think that's basically what I'm going to draw in mine. So the next thing I'm going to do, you can keep going as you're working with either your black crayon or your pencil. I would, if you did it with pencil, I would take my black and go ahead and trace each one of those lines. Because it looks super cool when you have them traced. Then the next colors we're going to be using, we're going to actually use um, six colors. Our, uh, warm colors, red, yellow, and orange, and our cool colors, uh, blue, green, and purple. And we're going to use all six of these, this, our colors of the rainbow. And um, let's see. Uh, I'll tell you what, I'm going to go ahead and change my colors to make them like the colors of the rainbow. Let me do that. Be super cool. Red, what's the next color? Orange, yellow, green, blue, purple. See, I use all my pieces. I'm going to be using this blue all the way up. All right. Eventually. So here's my artwork for Sandra Silver wig. Remember, she had synesthesia, uh, which means she could uh, see and hear and feel color. Or like when you thought about the alphabet, she could um, possibly hear of colors from the alphabet uh, and see colors from the alphabet. So we're going to go ahead and take this page and think about what we can do with it. I'm going to go ahead and put a pattern on here. This pattern, she, fill, she fills it up with all kinds of colors. See? Ah! So while you're drawing, what you're going to think of is what kind of patterns you can put in there, and you're going to color it up. So I'm going to go bigger again. Actually, I think I'm going to do it three times. If I have room, fine. If I don't, I'll just skip it. See, your eyes can see the patterns. All right. I think I'm going to do some little lines coming off the chin here. In fact, I'm going to keep going with those lines. So our job will be to color this up. So we're going to color this up. And let's see, I might do some little lines coming down the eye. It could be little eyelashes, right? If you want to add eyelashes, if you want to add spirals, spiral goes around and around and around. Um, in fact, let's see, I am going to put some circles up here. Well, actually ovals. Ovals. And I'm going to color this up with another color. So that'll be a kind of pattern that I have here. And uh, let's see. Oh, I like zigzags. I like zigzags. So actually, I like all of the lines. They're all my friends. I call them my friend lines in the classroom. So when I color this up, it's going to look super cool. I'm going to put a color on top of it. I think on this one, I'm going to do yellow. So that's our job is to go ahead and decorate it up. One little thicker line. You could do it twice. Let's see, and see when I color it up. 
See how cool it's gonna look? You can color anything you want, whatever you wanna color it. Like I said, if you don't finish this, we have it started and you can always finish it Silver words. A silver wig, excuse me. I'm going to do the reverse here. I'll color it in yellow and uh, the inside, and I'm going to do orange on the outside. Now I want you to be able to get, make sure you don't have any white left over except maybe for the whites of the eyes. Remember she had synesthesia. A few artists have that from time to time. Okay, I'm gonna put this one yellow. So we're gonna do all different kinds of colors. On our artwork, we only have about maybe five minutes left. Five to seven minutes actually. Coloring up my artwork, like I said, I don't use leave any spaces white from this angle here. It's gonna, I won't be able to see all the spaces. I'll have to go back. See how it's starting to look super cool? Oh, since I have red, I'm gonna do a pattern on the other side with the red. And remember the different pressure that you use on your crayons? Well, first of all, if you press too hard, you're going to break them. You don't need to do that. Sometimes just by going over and over something, you can darken up a color. Okay. Oh, you know what? I did forget I wanted to break up this, the top and the bottom. So I'm going to go ahead and put a line across. There we go. I want to break it up. And I'm gonna do some lines going across the face. I'm gonna just do random lines going. Maybe this is a guy and he's got a full beard on this side. Maybe this is a girl just dressing up for a stage performance. Or maybe it's a guy that's doing the same. Who knows? Your eye sees patterns. Actually, on this, I'm using some what's called analogous colors. They're right next to each other on the color wheel. Just like if you had the rainbow, they're right next to each other. See, I used the yellow and the orange. Well, actually the yellow goes in between. And I'm going to color this with the one that's right next to it. I'll either go to the one on the side or the one on the other side of it. So in this case, this is red. You'd have purple. And I'm going to come around. 
And that's what I'm going to color this side with. And I'm going to go ahead and color each one of these. You can color it any way you'd like. I just thought I'd throw that in, the colors that are right next to each other. Sometimes I put my finger in the way I can hit it so I don't cross over that line if I'm trying to go quickly. Are y'all having fun? Like I said, I sure do miss my students. I miss seeing their artwork. So if y'all send some of that, some pictures of your class art on Facebook to us, we could see how y'all are doing in the classroom. show you I want to show you what it looks like when you get it all colored up see how fabulous they can look you can color any kind of colors you want just think about putting them on the paper with a pattern see how you have patterns within the paint the colored areas. Now this artwork is in the style again of who class? Sandra Silsberwig. And she had synesthesia, which means she could see and feel and hear color. So she did fabulous artwork. Remember we are all we are all different. So we're going to continue coloring up whatever you need to color and finish up your artwork. I'm going to color that a different color. I'll try not to go on the line. I just can't reach it very well here, but you can see. That it's going to be looking like this kind of style when it's done. Take a moment and view your artwork. Turn and look at your neighbor's artwork. Notice the similarities and the differences between your artworks. Remember, we're all unique. Thanks for joining me today. We learned so many things. Today for Women's History Month, we talked about the famous artist, Sandra Silsberwig. We also created a portrait inspired by her artwork. As you are going through your week, notice the stories of women you hear. Notice the faces, and portraits, and lines that you see. Think about how you could use them in other artworks. Also, um, Think about the stories you may hear and see of uh, special people who have overcome great obstacles. Enjoy the rest of your day. I can't wait to see you next time.